Dr. Shepard, you are the co-founder and CEO of Ginfinity Precision Medicine. So thank you for joining us today. It's great to have you back on the channel. It's my distinguished pleasure to join you and Richard. <laughs> thank you. So Dr. Sher, um, what I'd like to start is really kind of at the beginning. Uh, so one of the things that Ginfinity does is you help people measure and then uh, come up with a kind of an optimal NAD le level. So why is NAD so important? Why is having the, the right amount of NAD so important? So this is a very important question that uh, I think everyone should pay attention to. Uh, NAD is so important because it's a core enzyme involved in the function of over 500 different enzymes. Almost all biological processes uh, depend on optimal NAD level to function. Some of the important uh, enzymes uh, that require NAD to function well or function at all uh, include the production of cellular energy in the form of ATP. You know, a ATP is the currency that the cells use uh, to do many, many different things. Without ATP, we would die immediately. And the enzymes that require NAD also include uh, the ones that regulate gene expression, mainly the sirtuins. And many people in the longevity field do know the importance of sirtuins. And NAD is also important for many other enzymes uh, such as the ones involved in repair the damage to our DNA and the enzymes that uh, are required to uh, regulate our sleep. And, and also many of the enzymes that are important for immune function also require NAD, such as CD38. And, you know, CD38 is actually one of the most important enzymes that degrade uh, NAD in our system. So I can, you know, continue on and on <laughs> and talk about it for hours and mm. as to why NAD is so important. And, you know, it's the most fundamental molecule that regulate how our cells work and how our body works. Unfortunately, NAD levels decline with age. And if we don't take actions to get NAD levels up, and we are not going to perform at the optimal level. And that's it. So, so that's interesting, because I, I just read a review paper that was published like very recently, it was in 20, 2022, that showed that, that, well, it talked that the scientific evidence for the lowering of NAD as you get older is not actually that strong. Which is strange because in the um, aging community, it's like a given, like NAD goes down. Everybody. So, uh, have you looked at your own data and what do you see? Well, we have tested over 20,000 people now at various ages. And you see a very clear and sharp decline with age. And the declining uh, starts as early as in one's twenties, and I continue to go down, and reaches about the bottom uh, around the 50, 60 years of age. It may continue to go down a little bit uh, as we age, but not that much. So if you look at the levels or the distribution of NAD levels in teenagers. 75% of them have NAD levels at or above 40 micromole. Mm -hmm. And but 25% of them already have lower levels. Some even have extremely low levels and around five to 10 micromole. And those individuals are usually, usually have uh, serious health problems. So it's really a distribution. And you can have high levels of NAD, moderate levels of NAD, or deficient levels of NAD, 
at any age group. What changes is the proportion of individuals uh, who have suboptimal or deficient energy levels, and that proportion increases with age. Uh, in teenage years, it's about 25%. If you look at people around the 30 years of age, it becomes about 40%. Uh, you go, if you go to uh, the 50s and 60s, it's almost 90% of people who have levels that are suboptimal or deficient. And when you move on, go to, you go to the 80s, the 90s, and you know around 95%, maybe even a higher proportion of the elders and have deficient energy levels. You really have to look at the distribution, not just the average. The average goes down with age, but looking at the, the distribution, the proportion of people who have deficient levels uh, is much more meaningful than look, looking at the average. So you, I mean, you may have like the, the best database for like NAD levels with age based on all your testing, I, possibly. Well, so yeah, uh, <laughs> if you look at the literature and they are about five or six uh, clinical trials in uh, the biggest clinical trial, uh, you know, 20, maybe in the most recent trial, 40 people were, were supplemented with NMN. Uh, in the early studies, uh, they were usually only 10 people analyzed. So if you combine all these published studies, about 120 people have been tested in by the entire uh, scientific community, and we testing over 20,000. So, um, unfortunately, we have not had time to get the data published, and but this is in our plan. It's becoming more and more urgent that we publish our data. So, it's available on our website, but it's not uh, in a peer-reviewed uh, publication yet, and we need to do it. Right, I'm definitely looking forward to that. There are, you, you talk about two types of NAD, right? Circulating NAD and intracellular NAD. Uh, so could you talk briefly about what, how the two are, what the two are? Yeah. So again, this is a very important question. Um, but most people, including uh, NAD experts, um, don't no, or don't make a distinction uh, between the two forms. So the distinction is very easy. Uh, it's based on where the NAD is uh, fine or found. Uh, NAD located inside the cells uh, is called intracellular NAD. And by us, we you know we uh, we kind of uh, not invented, but we we made the term uh, widely used. And circulating NAD is found in the plasma, in the liquid portion of the blood. Okay, mm -hmm. not, not, I mean, there are blood cells in the blood, and there's NAD inside the blood cells as well. Um, but there, there is a small amount of NAD found in, in the liquid part, that's what we call uh, plasma. Because blood circulates all over the body, and we call it circulating NAD. And uh, you can also use the term extracellular NAD, and that's NAD found outside of the cells. We actually find NAD in saliva. I'm sure there's NAD in other bodily fluids. I don't know what uh, the NAD is doing in, in the saliva, and have no idea, haven't studied the question yet. Now, most of the functions of NAD that uh, are commonly talked about uh, are related to intracellular NAD. Very few people talk about the functions of circulating NAD, NAD in the plasma. Uh, both types of NAD play very important roles, but very distinct roles as well. And we can go into the details if you want uh, at some point. Mm. But I would be interested 
to know what we know about circulating NAD? Sure. So um, NAD is uh, can be considered as a ligand or a neurotransmitter. And there are receptors found on certain cell types, mainly on neuronal cells and the immune cells. Now, um, so since there are receptors on neuronal cells, and when NAD outside of the cells bind to the receptor, you can change the function of the neuronal network. That's why NAD uh, has been used to treat many neurological conditions, including Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and, and also addictions. And the treatment has been very successful, at least in a subset of the patients. And this has been going on for decades, you know, with some, uh, clinical outcomes uh, that are very good. And so that's one of the main functions that has been reported and by physicians and uh, uh, patients. There are no official peer-reviewed reports that I can find on the topic. Now, NAD uh, treatment, mainly through the intravenous infusion, has also been used to treat certain infectious diseases, especially Lyme's disease. And the clinical outcome is also uh, pretty good. More recently, NAD IV infusion has been used to treat COVID patients, especially post-COVID syndrome. And the outcome seems to be pretty good for at least uh, you know, some post-COVID uh, patients. And so up to uh, up till now, the main benefits from circulating NAD has been in these two areas, neurological conditions and in some, some infectious uh, diseases. I'm, I'm sure as more studies are done, uh, we're going to find the uh, functions related to uh, other parts of the body. And that's certainly a, a possibility. How, what's the percentage of kind of circulating NAD to intracellular NAD generally? Generally, it's about 5 to 15% of what you find inside of the cells. And it varies from person to person. And there is a correlation, but not a very good correlation between intracellular NAD and...